What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. One of the seven deadly sins, though, is avarice. Right. Which involves the want for money and greed. And a big part that often gets ignored that's extremely important, I think, to look at with yeah. slavery mm -hmm. is that there was an enormous economic interest in it. They oh, yeah. had free labor. Oh, yeah. Right? And yeah. Which I think makes it worse. Right. But if someone economically mm -hmm. was doing it because their father did it and they have to manage this plantation that right. grows whatever fucking plant, you know, mm -hmm. tobacco or something, they're like, well, our yeah. business is going to go under if we don't have these slaves. Mm -hmm. Does that passivity mean evil though? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, it's, see for me, and again, I'll go back to the, the, the whole reason my channel exists is because I evaluate everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. I think the reason it's, so tough to define situations like this is because there are going to be exceptions or things you didn't think about. And you only know that when you start looking at individual cases. Right. On the whole, slavery is bad. On the whole, being sla a slaver was evil. But were there slave owners that weren't as evil as some other slave owners? Probably. Were there slave owners who freed, the sla freed their slaves after they were forced to, which isn't good, but then realized the error of their ways and even went on to maybe Redemption. help people, yeah, you know? Yeah. There's, it depends. It all depends on the person that you're, you're talking about and looking at, you know? And for people like like the the great leaders of the past who who were a part of these things, I, I kind of look at it like, so I, I do this with films too. So one example is Roman Polanski. He's... Univer pretty much universally reviled as a horrible person because of what he did. I don't know if you, if I should oh, yeah. go into explicit Yeah, please, please, ex please explain that he, background. I think he was, I don't remember exactly, but it was like a 14-year-old girl or something that he was believe that's right. babysitting or watching or something, and he got her drunk at a party, and yeah, then he, he living, took he advantage of her, you right. know? Um, and then he fled to France, and, you know, he hasn't It's directed movies back. there. Yeah. yeah. But he made one of the greatest horror movies ever made, Rosemary's Baby. And he did that before he did that. And he even did though, Chinatown too, right? I, was that him? I don't remember. I Can we I, look that up? Chinatown, Roman Polanski? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Sorry, go ahead. My nerd brain was kicking in right there. Now, should Roman have been allowed to continue making movies and be a friend? That depends. You know, he should have served some time for what he did. He should have, you know, been punished for it. And maybe after he got out and redeemed himself, if people want to watch his movies and are able to forgive him, that's fine. But... When you didn't know someone was a horrible person and they made a fantastic movie, are you going to stop watching the movie? Some people, yes, but I think no. Like, for example, Kevin Spacey is pretty much donezo in, in all aspects of life, right? Like, he And he used to be my favorite actor, ironically, before he did his stuff. And, but he's not my favorite actor anymore, but I can they still, still watch, watch it. I can still watch The Usual Suspects. You know, that was a great movie. I didn't know he was... A, uh, a serial abuser, sexual abuser back I got, then. I got five words and, for you, pal. Huh. I believe I can fly. <laughs> it's a fucking great song. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I hate right? it. Yep. I hate myself yep. One for it. One of the most it. defining songs of the 90s. is a rapist <laughs> bastard. Yeah, he is. Hate he him. is a yeah. terrible guy. Keep him in prison for the rest of his God life. God damn, it's yeah. not a good song. Exactly, and right? yes, I do yeah. sing it. Mm-hmm. It's, right. it, this is, I think about this though, because yeah. I'm like, listen, I'm like, oh, I'm so bad for liking this, but I believe I can fly. So if George Washington, for example, was the, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just going to throw out a hypothetical example. Let's say he was, he was the guy who said that we should be free, you know, and, the, you know, most people should be free, most obviously, um, and that we need to have this democratic system and do all these great things, but he owned slaves. Does that make what he said untrue? No. No, no, it doesn't. If Hitler thought the sky was blue, are you going to no longer think the sky is that's blue? That's right. That's that's it. You know, it's I don't know to what degree people should revere people from the past who have done horrible things, who have also done great things. I can't answer that question. That's up to, you know, the public consensus. But I don't think anyone should be disqualified from having reverence for them in certain ways, like certain things they said or did, yes. if they did horrible things. 
Because no matter what they did, what they said is still true or what they did is still true, right? Like, again, the sky is still blue, no matter if a serial killer right. thinks it's blue or I think it's blue, right. right? So when it's stuff like that, then yes. It's strange where we have this arbitrary line that none of us really know where it is, though. Because, like... I know, right? By that, you can say... It's like the Bruce Lee thing. Take what's good, discard what's bad, learn. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. We can do that with George Washington and stuff. Yeah. And and there's a side note, by the way, George Washington, upon death, freed his slaves. Right. Which means that in life, he knew it was wrong. Right. I struggle with that. Right. That goes yeah. both ways. People are mm-hmm. like, oh, good. Well, he knew it. And he freed him. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but why did he wait till he died? Exactly. Right. Right. Like yeah. he was collecting on their labor while he was yeah. still alive. He's like, so, yeah, you may, you keep picking that, cut, uh, that fucking cotton. When I, I croak, you're good. I don't need him anymore. So they can fuck go. Fuck my kids. Yeah. I don't need a trust fund, but you're taking care of me. <laughs> right. But- you know, we are able to, like, I look positively at George Washington, for example, in history. Right. I think he did overall. I think mm-hmm. he did many things. But then there's some people who are so past the point of no return that you can't even say something that is objectively true, right? And I will use an example here that I don't even like saying, but like, if you study Hitler, there's something to be said for the fact that when he got in front of an audience, he was an extremely charismatic speaker. Yeah. He's a brilliant speaker, mm-hmm. actually. And in some ways, you should study that to figure out how to not make this happen again. Mm-hmm. But you also may look at it, and there may be – some things are like crazy person culty shit. Of course, most of it is. Yeah. But you may you may be able to say, oh, he dropped the bar right there, right? You, right. May be, you know what I mean? But yeah. like you can't say that at a dinner party. Sure. Hitler. So I think the – I think the only thing to consider there is another thing about Hitler. And as along with the speaking, he was also very kind to animals. He loved animals. He was a yeah. vegetarian. And he also <laughs> banned smoking in the in Germany because he thought smoking was harmful and bad, which is true. It is. And, Meth was better, apparently. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, but when you're looking to take inspiration from like an animal rights activist or an anti-smoking activist or a great orator... You can probably look somewhere else. That's correct. You know what I mean? Like I don't disagree. Yeah. So you can you could still like, and it's true, especially for as and as far as Hitler's oratory goes, oratory skills. Um, that might be something to study for people who are interested in the craft and the art and want to figure out how to speak and move to influence millions of people and be successful in that way. Which is might be okay, but it's yeah. Uh, yeah, right. It's what like, are you eh, trying to influence? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's, it's for the smoking and the animal thing in particular. It's like stat, more static things like that. That's not necessarily tied to his person. Like Hitler didn't. He's not the only one who said smoking is bad and treat animals well. You know, there's another person you can look to for inspiration for anti-smoking and and animal rights, right? But on a personal oratory skill level, yeah, he had a unique skill set that could be analyzed by someone interested in the craft that might benefit them in some way. But so yeah, for um but for things like that, you know, if if what they had to offer was something totally unique that you literally cannot you either you cannot get it somewhere else or if you study someone else who has done it since, it ties back because they got influenced by that person, you have no choice but to look to that person. Mm. If George Washington was the first person to say something, but then someone expanded upon it better later on, well, maybe they were influenced by George Washington. Of course. So you have to examine George Washington too. And you have to consider what he said in order to understand a good concept, despite the bad things that he did. So it's rough. It's difficult. You know, every every situation is different. But if there's a, I, I would just say, if there's a better person to look to, look to that person. But if it's it's impossible to not consider that person when examining something, then what what choice do we have? You know, mm. it's it is what it is. Yeah, history is just so fascinating, man. Like you look at it, the, the, you, we're always going to be psychopaths in the future in some way. Oh yeah, right. Like they, like three hundred years from now, maybe they look back on us and they realized we had the technology to not have to have a child born in the womb, and we made women do it for an extra fifty right. years. And yeah. they're like those murderers. All right. They yeah. made women carry children <laughs> yeah. for nine months and. <laughs> 20,000 of them died or right. whatever in the United States. Yeah. They're murderers of mm-hmm. those people. Like, there's always going to be that. Oh, yeah. But some of them, in hindsight, you're like, oh, that did seem a little obvious. But uh, again, like what you've done to this point is look at it through art, 
Yeah. Right. And art obviously involves a lot of history. We just talked about Hans Lange, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. So it, it carries it in. But I think one of the beauties of, of art, meaning, you know, whatever it may be, but to talk about films right now, yeah. is they allow us through fictional worlds to see a lens of ourselves, including mm-hmm. in the context of history. Right. And there's no better movie ever made, period, in my opinion, than The Godfather. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Have an agreement? I, what did I? Yes. Oh, I was good. I was struggling with something. I don't know. I think it's just because if you go to every list of like top movies ever made, what's number one? Do you know? Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Yeah. And I understand why Citizen Kane is number one because, well, I understand now. I didn't know before because I was like, and I watched it and I was like, this is good, you know. But Citizen Kane is number one because Orson Welles pioneered so many That's new right. techniques. That it's like, right. he's the one who made modern cinema with that movie. So you have to give it number one for being the influence for everything. You I, know? Will, I will give but, it that respect and raise right. it. It's still not But The Godfather is this. <laughs> I have actually a funny story about The it. Godfather. Go so it. I, in high school, there was this kid in my class, and I think he's in film now. Um, and I don't know if I should say his full name. I don't know if that's a good idea. We can bleep it out if we have to. Okay. His name is, uh, his name was... Okay, he has a, an, an an Indian name. Okay, that does enough. A Hindu name, yeah. but he was a white kid, and the reason is because his parents were super hippie vegan people who had converted to Hinduism, and his yeah, he was a cool kid. I was I was one of my good friends in high school, and I, uh, it was I'm sad I don't connect with him anymore. You know, but you got a little Irish kid named Vishnu. I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <Yeah. laughs> it's it's cool. He's got a cool name. It's 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 interesting. It's kind of like me because in America at least. Um, most people associate the name Jamal with uh, black people. Um, it's more yeah. so a black name yeah. than it is an Arabic name because that's what we're exposed to. Like every Jamal you'll meet is usually black. So when they see me and they're like, Jamal. Yeah, but what? I, <laughs> I see what you're saying. I, yeah. I didn't think because I know it's a common Arabic name too. Yeah, but most a lot of people don't. don't. Yeah, yeah right. in America specifically. You're right. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.